Okay, hi everyone. So today we will start a new chapter that is advertising on the web. We'll see that it has a lot to do with uh, bipartite graphs and matching problem. Uh, some of which you might have seen in your algorithm courses. All right, so let's get started. So online ads, of course, is a huge industry. And um, the basic type of online ads we see everywhere, um, where actually there more than 20 years ago also, as, as soon as the internet kind of uh, spread a lot uh, and uh, before the search ads which is our main topic today uh, display ads were pretty popular um, because that's all people could do at that point of time so the model of display ads was something like uh, suppose there is a website which is a very popular website so a lot of people visit that and then if you want to advertise on that website, the website will charge you uh, for every 1000 impressions. That means every 1000 times your ad is shown, the website will charge you some fee. So basically with every impression essentially, but it's like um, not with the, the, the money becomes significant only uh, in, in thousands and things like that. So the, the, this uh, CPM, this is called the CPM. CPM actually comes from cost per mile, but uh, this is there is nothing with mile here. It's actually a cost per 1000. Uh, so, uh, so basically what happens is whenever a user visits the website, so that is one impression and the ad is shown to the user, means the ad is embedded or displayed in the website anyway, uh, then, uh, Based on that count, the advertiser pays the publisher or the website. Now, this model of advertising is mm, similar to what we have in television, for example. Uh, this much uh, in this particular program, uh, you know, for a 20 seconds ad, you have to pay this much. And, and this depends really on the popularity of the program it's very dynamic as well. So for example, for the IPL final, it's going to be a huge amount for uh, some other not so important IPL game. It's not going to be that much, right? So so that's the TV thing. Magazine ads also same thing, right? So you, you book a page in the magazine or banners in the city. So if you, if you go out, you might see to advertise huge banners on the road, to advertise here, uh, call this number, right? So basically, in the for a fixed uh, length of time, maybe a week or a few days or whatever it is, you have to pay some ad, pay some um, fee. The assumption is that okay, on this road, these many uh, people kind of travel per week or per day, and then so if they go, uh, portion of them will actually see that. So basically, the idea about that is you want to reach people. So you want to be seen and heard. Uh, and then obviously the rest is your job. Your ad has to be, your product has to be good. Your ad has to um, be attractive and all other things are there. So th those are not the, uh, th that's not the portion we are going to get into, but you know these display ad things a lot. And there are many types of display ads online also. So, so I just uh, spent a, couple of minutes this uh, discussing about the offline ads but there are many uh, types of display ads online for example a banner in the website and pop-up which most of us find annoying maybe there can be trick banners so the uh, trick banners are like you know they tell you to uh, click something but when you click it actually it opens another website uh, things like that then overlay etc so we must have seen them all uh, and that's not our main topic uh, so yeah, this is just a background that yeah, these kind of ads, uh, obviously different types of display ads. So display ad still lives and uh, how to show it properly, how to make more impression uh, on the user and so on. So those things are a different topic of um, discussion altogether. But uh, the problems are 
the display ads are not targeted or not demographically targeted either. Um, that means anybody visits the website, it might actually show the same ad. Well, one can put some kind of conditions based on location and stuff like that, but that doesn't mean uh, you are actually targeting a kind of a type of customer or user or something like that, right? So uh, at that point of time, the user may not be interested in seeing that kind of an ad. And hence what happens was, uh, what happened or happens is uh, the probability of a user or visitor seeing, I mean, given that the user sees the ad, the probability of the user clicking it is lower than what can happen. So what was done later, right? And that means uh, low ROI for advertisers. Uh, let's discuss this portion a bit. Um, so what is the scenario, this advertisement scenario here actually? Who is the customer? Who is the seller or service provider and uh, what? So, so this website or the publisher, if you are if, you know, if you're advertising on YouTube, Google or Facebook, then that's the website, maybe some other website. Okay, so that's actually the seller, right? The, the customer is the advertiser here. So the customer wants the ads to be seen by the consumers who eventually they're hoping will actually pay these people to buy some product or some service or something like that. Uh, so that's, that's an eventual goal, but um, basically the, the immediate goal is, okay, I'll pay you for showing my ad to these people. Since these people have a, have a good interaction with the consumers for some reason, for providing some free service, maybe like Google search, okay? Uh, if you can show the ads here, then you can reach the consumers. So essentially, as you must have heard this phrase a lot of times, if you're not paying for something that you are using, you are not the customer, you are the product. So you can think of here, either the consumers or the ad itself. So the, the service of showing the ad is also the service that these people are using, or uh, we'll see in the next slide that you can also think of the consumers as the product as well. But essentially, these are the customers, the advertisers, and these are the sellers, right? And this is how the payment is being made. So this is the portion of the business going on here and not this portion, okay? Now, yeah, we discussed cost per impression or CPM, cost per thousand impression or whatever, so the CPM thing, uh, but it's not that good. It's something like, you are actually, you have, you have to spend money and you are spending it, you know, just you are throwing money around and hoping that some people will pick up your money and come back and give you some product that you want, right? So, uh, so that's not really good. So it's like pay anyway, even if the user does not click uh, and so on. In TV and all these things also, it's the same, but in TV or in videos, viewers, have to stay more glued to the screen because uh, viewers cannot really bypass the ad. Mm, on a website, uh, one can actually bypass the ad and go down, scroll down and uh, you know read the relevant material that the user actually came to read. But on TV, well, you can of, of course optimize uh, to certain extent, but uh, it's very difficult to, uh, I mean, you cannot actually bypass the ad and then do something on the TV at that point of time, right? So of course you can um, do something else, but so basically that's the whole idea. Uh, so um, that means that uh, this kind of showing ad, although if you have nothing else, uh, the, if there is no other option, then that's what people did, is may not be the best one. A better option for the advertiser is, well, pay only if the consumer clicked, okay? That means if the consumer clicked on that, that means the consumer showed some initial interest. Of course, maybe only a small percentage of them will finally end up buying your product, but you know, that's a different story altogether. But as I mean, the, the purpose of advertisement is, uh, this, this part of the advertisement is solved if the consumer at least clicks on that. And the advertiser will be happy if they can, they are allowed to pay only when the user clicks. 
and not otherwise. So just means that I, I show your ad and then you have to pay me. No, you pay me only when I show your ad and my viewers or users click on your ad. So this gives a much more, you know, much better feeling uh, of ROI to the uh, advertisers. And uh, now the point is, what is the product? So here, what you are, what the advertiser is getting is the advertiser is actually paying the money only when the advertiser is getting what they want, and that is the product. The consumer's interest is what the advertiser wants. So click. So click is basically the product, right? So basically, they are paying only when they are getting what they want. So that's much better for the um, advertisers, and this is called this is called from cost per cost per impression. This model is cost per click. Okay. Okay. So there is a bit of history here, and I'm I'm not going to spend time uh, on this uh, short in the short short sessions of the classes. But I recommend all of you to read this particular blog post, or yeah, maybe this is a blog post. Um, it's pretty reliable. Looks, I mean, I read it. It's very nice. Uh, so I'll just tell you in one minute uh, the gist of it. But the basic point is we all think that Google kind of pioneered this uh, uh, search ad thing with AdWords. It's actually not true. Uh, Goto.com was a website, and then Overture.com was another one. Goto.com became Overture.com, and uh, so there are people who actually made this thing. Uh, then Google also started doing this. And these people actually filed a lawsuit. I mean, it's patent infringement lawsuit uh, uh, against Google. Uh, so writing patents are tricky. Um, patents are tricky anyway because you can claim you have basically invented everything about some product, but then just like you can do that, others can also find loopholes in the patent and do something very similar often, uh, but. Uh, not and then then they can prove that they're not really infringing what you have claimed. So um, what happened was later on Yahoo acquired Overture to um, uh, compete with Google, um, and finally kind of Google settled for a five percent stake uh, thing given to Yahoo or something like that. So the the fight kind of um, didn't really go through much, but. Finally, what happened was this whole idea. Google was the one who, who won and who who was actually able to use this uh, properly. Not only because uh, I mean probably because they did it well or whatever the implementation was better or something, but the main thing is their user base was so huge that uh, well, their when they did it, it became actually much more successful. All right, so. Uh, uh, Please read this uh, post, um, but we were we will be more interested in the technical part of how these things are done. So let's move on. So from display ads, then um, uh, the idea is okay. You the advertiser pays only when the ad is clicked on, but how to make sure that uh, that happens or how does okay that's definitely good for the advertiser, advertiser but then. For the ad provider, that means, for example, for the search engine or the website, it's it's then a bit of a problem, right? So I, I suddenly promise to you that no, no, you don't have to pay me all the time. You pay only when your ad is clicked. But then, what if your ads are trash? I mean, what if your product is trash? Okay, so your product is trash. That means uh, your ads are very seldom clicked, uh, and then it's going to be bad for my website as well, right? So I'm not, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of blocking my uh, space on the website for you, for your ad, but uh, there is no revenue, right? So uh, to so the following points are then made to make sure that, no, no, so the, the search engine or the website that provider, the service provider who is showing that, they also mm, get what they want, that's the revenue, by firstly, show ads based on what the user is interested in, so that means don't just show any ad. Show the ads what the uh, when the user is interested in it, and uh, then the ads are relevant to the user. And there's a much higher chance of clicking as well. As soon as somebody clicks, the advertiser is also happy, and the search engine is also happy because they get the money. Okay. So 
how to do that this was done using search engine in the very nice way the advertisers bid on search queries okay so how what do they mean by bid a bid is like this if my ad is shown when the user search to it keyword q in the query there are the word q some word will be present there and the user clicks on my ad then i will pay b dollars so i'll pay only when the user search searches with keyword q and clicks on my ad all right now the search engine's problem then is for every search with query q or query containing the keyword q whatever the engine has to display some of the ads that have a bid on that query so one there it may not be the case and it's never the case that only one advertiser has bid for that keyword there will be lot of them and lot of them have also specified different kinds of bids right different uh, dollar amount so for every query that everything that you are searching in google any query we fire okay the search engine has to decide which of the ads to show maybe three ads maybe one ad okay basically a subset of the ads right so that's the technical problem of the search engine so that means um, so obviously we all know that the search advertising is a multi billion dollar industry so that are two sides of the technical problem mainly search engine's problem is which ads to show for a search query queue and the advertiser's problem is which search terms should i bid on and how much the second side is like um, what we vaguely know as seo uh, although seo has lot of other things uh, there's a huge industry for writing seo optimized content so first of all you bid for a keyword but it has to be the case that when google when somebody searches in google with that keyword your page shows up right so that's another way of doing it so your page should show up then um, it, the page should be relevant if the page itself is the ad right okay so there are all these things there but we uh, at this point of time we will wear this hat we will we will we will take this problem from the point of view of the search engine or the ad provider or add add yeah like the service provider to the advertisers that given advertisers their uh, their bids to the keywords and so on what ads to show for a search query now um the the classical model of algorithms is that uh, you have all the input and when you compute you have you get to see the entire input and then you compute something out of it right but as we have seen in streaming data and here also we actually need to develop online algorithms what do we mean by that is you get to see the input one piece at a time and need to make decisions and at that point of time you have to make a decision okay so you you cannot change it later on so some some user searches in a searches uh, fires a search query uh, to the engine the relevant results are returned the ads are shown at that point of time that decision has to be made then that's gone right then the next query comes so you cannot think ahead uh, or rather you don't know what the next query will be okay so you don't really know uh, you cannot really optimize based on seeing your whole input okay so this is similar to the data stream model all right so uh, yeah so now we will actually uh, go into the problem technically uh, before that let me just stop and uh, ask you whether you have any comments or questions so far this is more like a story so do you have any uh, questions on this sir can you explain the last part uh, online algorithm mm -hmm. okay so this we will actually uh, we will actually see the online thing uh, in the next few slides mm, so i mean it will be very clear to you then basically the, yeah it will be clear Let, let's not spend time on that right now anything else
all right so let's move on um, <clears throat> so the basic problem that we need to look at for this is the bipartite matching all of you have done this right in your algo or uh, graph algorithm something like that have you yes sir. yes yes okay. sir. So anyway, so we'll, we'll still do it again here, but uh, we'll do it in a very light mode uh, and quickly. So of course you all know our bipartite graph with two sets of nodes, V1 and V2 with edges only across the sets, right? So only across the sets. And then a matching is a subset of the edges such that no two edges in M have a common node. In other words, let's uh, connect that to our scenario. Here, for example, in this picture, if we have main and omen here, one one pairing of main and omen in the picture, right? So uh, that's the matching. The goal is we want to maximize the number of nodes paired this way. Okay. So let's say we have, uh, this is a matching. So the green edges uh, gives you one particular pairing. One is paired to A, two to B and three to D. You can see that four and C cannot be matched because their possible partners are taken, right? Now observe that you cannot add any more edges to M, right? You cannot add any more edges because then it will not remain a matching. No more, no other, I mean, there is possible partner of C is not available and possible partner of four is also not available, right? So then M is a maximal matching. Maximal for any kind of a thing with respect to a property is that if you add any more element, then it will lose that property. Right. However, the cardinality of M is three. That means only three pairs of men and women have been uh, matched. Now the question is, can there be another matching with a higher cardinality? In other words, is M a maximum cardinality matching? Okay. What do you think? No. No, right. So there can actually be this matching. Right. There can actually be this matching which uh, now is able to match all four men and all four women. Uh, so M2 is maximal as well, uh, as well as of maximal cardinality. In fact, it is a perfect matching because everything is matched. Um, so now then the problem that we want to consider is given a bipartite graph, find a maximum cardinality matching. Of course, if it's a perfect one, if it exists. All right, very good. The offline versions you have must have all done. I don't know whether I've done the online things, the uh, online things with some more complications and we'll actually apply this into our uh, AdWords problem. So, so the offline, uh, offline things are there, but online, the problem is we will not have the entire graph initially. So what should we, what will we have? Okay, so what will we have? What we'll have is initially, we will know only the set of men, okay? We'll know the set of men and in each round, one we, uh, woman will appear and she will give her set of choices for men. Now, at that time, we have to decide whether we pair that woman with a man among her choices or we don't at all. So basically we tell uh, the woman, no, we don't have any match. Well, okay, so let, let's not get into uh, social feminism aspects of this, which means that here the men don't have any choice or everything is fine. But uh, basically the applications for this, so this is just a the, the man, men, women is just a funny way of saying this, but the example applications are actually objects like assigning tasks to servers or web requests to threads, and in our case, assigning ads to search queries. So ads are there, they are already given, or they are given to the engine, right? And they are ready to be shown. The search queries come, and the search queries, since the ads have uh, choices, so the edges are defined, right? Uh, the search queries then, for every search query, we should either show, show some ads or we don't, right? So that's the whole idea. Okay, so let's first, but by, as of now, we will we'll still uh, talk in terms of this uh, set of men and set of women kind of a thing here, uh, but um, 
let's take let's take a look at the greedy algorithm which is the simplest so the set of men are known the four men here as a new woman arrives with her choices the pair the woman with some man of her choice so this is the algorithm okay as long as we have a choice available right pair the woman with some man of her choice and that is random i mean if there are multiple choices just put something so a comes with these two choices right and we make this one the pairing so this is the online thing right so we don't know all the uh, the nodes of the right side right so we don't know all the nodes of the right side and the edges from the right to left or left to right or whatever so we only uh, each node appears one at a time and reveals their edges to the left side and then we have to make a choice of construct our matching immediately of this portion next b comes greedy will again pick something maybe picks this one and next c comes now the problem is c has only one choice but that man is not available anymore okay so then we cannot pair c and then the d comes well that can be a match all right so uh, we see that uh, this is a very simple algorithm to execute uh, but the thing we have to consider is how good or how bad is this algorithm obviously we know this graph for this graph there could be an optimal matching there could be an optimal matching with a higher cardinality right there can we can actually match all four men with all four women but we don't know them in advance so if we just apply the greedy algorithm how good or how bad will this be so that can be measured by the competitive ratio of a matching algorithm i'm pretty sure you know that so if m greedy is the matching by the greedy algorithm and m opt is an optimal matching then the competitive ratio is the size of m greedy by size of m opt here size of in this particular case the size of m greedy is 3 and m opt we know is 4 for this graph but this minimum is taken over all possible inputs input graphs g so this competitive ratio corresponds to an algorithm now an algorithm can run over any possible input to produce some output right for any possible input i run the algorithm i can run the algorithm as well as i can by some magic i i should know what is the best possible result so the ratio is the minimum of the ratio rather the worst case scenario is actually the competitive ratio of an algorithm the first thing to notice is that the greedy algorithm has competitive ratio half that means it will never be worse than half if if the optimal can match 100 pairs of men and women then the greedy will definitely do 50 at least okay so how do we prove that so let o so this is o okay let o be the optimal matching and g be the matches produced by one run of a greedy algorithm note that greedy algorithm is not deterministic in the sense that if you uh, i mean there are choices right so you just choose one of the choices at any point of time so it's possible that two different runs uh, actually produce two different outputs with two different ratios again the competitive ratio is the worst case scenario so the worst that you can do so let's say the o is the optimal matching and g is the matches produced by a run of greedy algorithm for some graph okay now to to prove the competitive ratio what do we have to do we cannot assume any particular graph right so it has to be for any graph that this will work okay so we need to show that two times the size of g is greater than equal to the size of o that means g is greater than equal to o by 2 i mean size of o by 2 now consider these sets of women uh, so women means the right side thing right so the the ones who are appearing at any round and the left side ones are already there so consider these sets of women a b c where a is the set of women matched in the greedy algorithm but not in the optimal algorithm or the optimal matching 
it doesn't have to come from an algorithm it can be from a complete enumeration or whatever not in o b is a set which are matched in both and c matched in the optimal but not in g okay so let me explain the picture here you should not think that a is this full oval a is only this part right only uh, it's like c uh, o minus g right so basically this the the nodes present in o minus g rather right and then b and then c is only this part okay so you know get the picture clear here uh, rather a and b together will give you the uh, women matched in g and b and c together will give you the women matched in o now during the greedy matching no woman in c could be matched right so that's the uh, definition the the these women they are matched in o but not in g so when we ran the greedy matching one particular run no woman in c no woman in c could be matched but it's not that they were unmatchable completely because they could be matched in o right so they could be matched in o but when you ran the greedy they could not be matched what does it mean it means that when we ran the greedy every w in c had her optimal match already taken by another woman or some match which was already available optimal match means the match which was matched in o all was already taken by another woman already so it's, this means so suppose there are 10 the size of c suppose the, that is 10 right so there are 10 women for whom the optimal match was already taken by another woman how many women would you women would you need to take those 10 matches at least you basically need 10 right so because everyone can take only one so which means those matches are taken by women in a and b right and that means the size of a plus a size of a plus size of b must be greater than or equal to size of c is this clear c are the unmatched women in greedy but they were matched in the optimal okay and they were matched in the optimal either so basically they are matched in the optimal means the number of women in a and number of women in b must be greater than or equal to the number of women in c is this part clear uh, hello sir mm -hmm. sir here uh, the greedy part is the green circle and the blue circle is the optimal part right 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 okay so um yeah basically these three a is only this left thing b is the intersection kind and c is the uh, the right side thing. yeah all right so then uh, size of a plus size of b is greater than equal to size of c and then we can write two times size of g okay g is a and b right so 2a 2b then i'm just writing it twice a b a b and this a plus b i mean the sizes right a plus b is greater than equal to c Again, a plus b is definitely greater than or equal to b. So I write a plus b greater than or equal to b and a plus b greater than or equal to c. So this is b plus c. So then this is o. So 2g is greater than or equal to o. Right? So then we have shown that the greedy algorithm, worst case scenario, the competitive ratio is at least greater than or equal to half. Okay. So essentially, in other words, the intuition is the following: that well, the women who could who who may remain unmatched in greedy, but they could have been matched in optimal. Their matches must have been taken by the ones who were matched, right? So the ones who were matched had size at least as much as the ones who were not matched. Okay, so. Uh, so that this showed that the worst case scenario for greedy is greater than or equal to half but can there be a scenario where it is half so this is slightly different graph from the one we have seen before so here the greedy matching we can do a greedy matching okay the first two if we match like this 
then we will not be able to match anything else. So the greedy matching will have cardinality two, but however, an optimal matching is possible with cardinality four. So the worst case scenario is indeed half. So then we have proved that the greedy matching algorithm has competitive ratio exactly half. And the worst case is basically half. All right. Okay. So now let's step back. And so far we have just done simple graph algorithm, online graph algorithm rather. Uh, but now let's try to place this into our application, which is the AdWords problem. So the AdWords problem is like the following. A stream of queries arrive at the search engine. The queries like Q1, Q2, blah, blah, blah. And there are several advertisers who have bid on each query. Oops, sorry. Now, when a query QY arrives, the search engine must pick a subset of advisor, advertisers whose ads are shown. And this has to be done online, right? So every query comes immediately, you have to choose uh, some advertisers whose ads have to be shown. And the goal is, we are now wearing the search engine's hat. So our goal is we should maximize the revenue of the search engine. Okay. We should maximize the revenue of the search engine. And if everybody's bid is the same, then it will be maximized by a maximal matching. Right. However, uh, even though the goal is maximum, maximize the revenue of the search engine, there are complications. That means it's not everybody's bid may not be the same or it's not like that really. Um, just showing the ad also doesn't mean that it's being clicked. So you can, your matching will tell you which ad to show, but that doesn't mean the ad will be clicked. Unless the ad is clicked, you don't get money. So each ad has a different probability or likelihood of being clicked. Example, let's say advertiser advertiser one, bids for some particular query bids dollar two but you know that only 10 percent of the time so point one is the click probability whereas there is another advertiser who bids much lesser but the click probability is much higher then which one would you like to uh, show right you should you would like to show the second one because the sec second one mm, will actually give you uh, a much better expected revenue so this click probability um, can be measured by historical performances, right? So uh, obviously to start with a new advertiser, new anything you don't really know, but uh, the, with historical performance, this can be uh, measured. So the simple solution with uh, this scenario would be <clears throat> instead of just the amount of bid, use the expected revenue, that is bid times the click through rate. So the money times the probability. But then there is another problem. Another problem is if we keep doing this, then every time for this particular query, I will only show advertiser two's ad. Then the advertiser two, every time I show that and some portion and some some fraction of the time the user clicks that advertiser two pays me money. And this goes on and on. Advertiser one will never get the ad shown and never will pay me. Advertiser two will get the ad shown, but will keep paying me. So that's a problem because then they only have a limited budget for their advertising campaign. So the other constraint is each advertiser has a limited budget. So you have a budget limit, probably based on you know budget limit per day or per week or something like that. Okay. So so that also has to be uh, taken into account. So the search engine cannot charge the advertiser more than the set budget. Okay, so you, I am telling you that, okay, I'm bidding for this keyword, show my, this particular ad, if the users uh, search with this keyword, if my ad is clicked, I'll pay you per click this much. But then look, the maximum I can pay is $500. Okay, so once that is finished, you don't have to show my, show my ad anymore, right? Okay, don't show, show my ad anymore. So that's more like, as more and more, um, so it's like the it's like the men on the left, right? So as more and more uh, times they are paired, at some point of time it will get exhausted. So budget will get exhausted. So essentially, uh, the first complication is solved in this particular way. It's just a table to explain that that there are three advertisers, there are these bids, and the click-through rates. 
it might look like advertiser A has the highest bid, but you actually see that uh, the bid times the click-through rate, the B has the highest one, right? So, and the A actually has the lowest one. However, this the whole thing that we heard now, we'll model this into our technical problem. But to start with, we'll consider a simplified model. All these things that advertisers will bid and so on, um, but we'll, we'll consider a simplified problem out of that. And that is, assume all bids are zero or one. So that means I don't bid or I bid. So as of now, let's assume all bids are the same. All positive bids are the same. Each advertiser has the same budget. Okay. And only one advertiser, uh, that means only one advertisement has to be chosen per query. We'll first do this for the very simple version. This is obviously you can see that it is far from the reality. The reality, what will happen? All of these are kind of, will become more granular. So this will not become a zero one. There will be different numbers. Same budget will also not be true. And it will also not be one advertisement. But anyway, so given these assumptions, let's again try our greedy algorithm, okay, and see how it pans out. So let's try the greedy algorithm, and but now we'll not talk about men and women anymore. We'll talk about advertisers and such queries. So arbitrarily, greedy algorithm, what will it do? Arbitrarily pick an eligible advertiser for each keyword, as long as the advertiser's budget is still there, right? So let's say there are two advertisers, A and B. And suppose that two kinds of queries are coming or two keywords are coming basically. A bids on query X only, but B bids on both X and Y. That means if, if the user searches with query X, I can show either of the ads. But the, if the user is searches with query Y, I cannot show A, I can only show B's ads. And let's say both have budget four dollar four or four units or whatever it is. Okay, then suppose the query stream comes like this. Okay, so four X queries and then four Y queries. By the greedy algorithm, it is possible that the first four X queries are assigned to B because B beats on X also. But then the Y queries cannot be assigned to B because B's budget is, budget is finished with four dollars. Okay, so dollar one is let's say every every query. If 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 you show, uh, you pay. Okay, so uh, just a bit of clarification here. Uh, we we sh we 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 showed in the previous slide that um, you are actually modeling instead of bid, you are actually modeling bid times click through rate. But when considering the mathematical problem, you can actually just talk about bid. Okay, so it's bid, but what we really mean is bid times click through rate. Because otherwise it will not be the pay per click, it would become pay per impression, right? So that's not what you mean. So don't get confused here. It just means that this is the scenario. This is actually B, uh, bids means uh, the weight uh, bid into click through rate is the same. Okay, so then what happens is uh, your your uh, uh, all four x queries are um, assigned to B. Y queries could be assigned to B if B had some budget left, but they cannot be assigned to A. So your greedy choice would become okay B B B B, and then the next four queries you cannot show any ad. Okay, so that's a wastage. However, you can actually do an optimal if you uh, if you could do the magic. You could actually first assign first four queries to A and the next four queries to B. So this means the greedy algorithm for this simple scenario, the simplified AdWords problem indeed has competitive ratio half. All right. And this is actually the worst case we already know. Uh, we will just talk about the balance algorithm and then uh, we will do the analysis in the next class. Um, 
So the balance algorithm due to Mehta, Saberi, Vazirani, and Vazirani um, goes in the following way. Instead of just assigning greedily, put some extra condition. For each query, pick the advertiser. Of course, among the advertisers who have bid on it, pick the advertiser with largest unspent budget. Okay. That means figure out the advertisers who are interested in this query. Among them, the, the one who has the largest still money left now, pick that. So essentially the idea here is to exhaust the money of everybody so that I get the most of the money. I get most of the money, right? I means the search engine. And of course there can be ties. There can be two advertisers uh, with the same amount of unspent money and then, then you break it arbitrarily like a random choice. So how to do that? So if we simply ap uh, apply that to advertisers A and B, A bids on query X, B bids on both X and Y, just like the previous case, same thing. Both have budget dollar four, and the query stream is this x x x x y y y y. Then, a balanced choice would be the following. How? First one, let's say randomly assign to. It can go to either A or B, so you assign it to B. Let's say. The second one, B's budget has now become three. A's by A's budget is still four, so you have to assign it to A. Then both's budget is down to three. Third one, you can again go to B, but the fourth one, then you have to go to A. Right, and then Y is you have to go to B because A, does, A doesn't bid on Y. So then you have six out of eight. Optimal is still this. So six out of eight, eight is your competitive ratio. That is three by four. So you have improved than you improved over greedy a bit. You can think of whether you, what if you do the opposite. So what if you assign the first X to A? Well, no problem. The second one then you have to assign to B because then B's budget is more than A. Then the third one you can again assign to B or A, but the second one again you have to assign to the other. The fourth one you have to assign to the other, right? So essentially balance will keep a balance between uh, exhausting the budget of every advertiser and that way it will try to, uh, basically at any point of time it will try to maintain kind of an invariant or kind of a balance uh, between that. However, as you can see, well, query stream could really be skewed this way if, if they knew that well, I'm going to get four X's and then four Y's, then I could think ahead and I could spend all the X's on A, right? But we would not know that beforehand. So the balance will also not be optimal. So the competitive ratio for balance will actually, in this simplified model, will be three by four. Okay, so in the next class, yes, yes. How we get completed this year, three by four? Okay, so the balance uh, is going to get this choice, right? So six queries are assigned to advertisers, but two queries will be not assigned. Last two Ys will not be assigned, right? Okay, uh, since you asked the question, maybe, maybe this is the query stream. That's the right side of the graph. And the two advertisers are the left side. Since both have budget four, you can say four copies of A and four copies of B. Okay, so it looks something like this. Let me actually, let me just draw this a bit. Okay, so I have actually four copies of A uh, and four copies of B. And on the, on the right side, I'm going to have uh, okay, so this is basically the matching problem we are working on now. All right. So now you can say basically what the choice means. The choice means the first X is mapped to a B. The second X is mapped to an A. The third X is mapped to a B. Fourth X is mapped to an A. So you can actually draw the uh, no edges here, right? So basically that's what we mean. So now I think it's clear, right? No, I mean, in the competitive SEO, we take minimum of our all the... Uh, part, 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 uh, can, can you just uh, speak again? I couldn't hear the voice was breaking. Uh, when, 
Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Just write on, write on the chat. The voice is totally breaking. Just write on the chat. I'll read it now. When you consider a competitive issue, we take the minimum of all graphs. Yes, yes, yes. We take the minimum of all graphs. Uh, so the, the point here is in this particular case, uh, in this particular case, just a moment. Here, this, yeah. Okay. yeah. So in this particular case, we get, we get three by four. So what do we know from that? We know that the competitive ratio cannot be more than three by four. So the worst case is at least as bad as three by four. For example, in case of balance, so in case of uh, greedy, we we did a half, right? So we mean we then know that the the minimum is at most half. I could be worse. I could even for some other input I could do worse, but I have already found an input and a run for which the ratio is half. So similarly for balance also, uh, what we now know that we already we found one case for which the ratio is three by four. In the next class, we will actually prove that for this simplified version, okay, the simplified version is your this version, right? So this assumption for any query stream, we will actually have three by four. So Yes, we have not proved that the competitive ratio for the algorithm is three by four. What we have shown is, we have shown an example for which it is three by four. That means the competitive ratio is at most three by four. Clear? Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, in the next class, we'll actually show that the competitive ratio is three by four. That means in this particular simplified uh, case, that means for any graph or uh, any 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 query stream or uh, anything with these assumptions, we will actually be able to achieve three by four. All right. Any other question immediately as of now? Fine. Then then I'll stop the recording.